what is going on guys welcome back to the channel so in today's need for speed 2015 video i did want to discuss something here in the game today now i do know a lot of players are probably jumping back into 2015 because for some odd reason i have been seeing a lot of people in the lobbies unless i'm tripping out then again i've also been playing older need for speed games recently because for some odd reason they are insanely fun to actually play them now i did want to ask something here though what do you guys actually think was the biggest issue with this game like for example you probably saw the title like yes the game could have been great but like what was the biggest reason it wasn't now for me guys i have to say the biggest thing here for most players at least what i have seen everywhere is most likely going to come down to one of the lovely things we know called the handling model i would probably say that's the number one thing with most players of why the game probably wasn't all that great like sometimes you try to go drift or the car would go a different direction or you would try to drift and the car wouldn't straighten out or I'd slide like that almost like a hovercraft. Now the funny thing about that though is I do know a lot of players back in the day, oh, okay bro, that makes a lot of sense. You know, let me just pay the fine so you don't chase me. Hold on bro, chill, chill, chill. I bet. That was interesting. That was one thing I wasn't the biggest fan of guys. I am going to make a separate video about the police. Really? I, bro, chill. Um, do I just... Come on over here, brother. Yes, yes, I know. I'll pay the 150 bucks. There we go. Let me start this race so this cop starts bothering me. I drove like 10 feet and he was like, Hey, yo, that's a Lambo, bro. What are you doing speeding up with that thing, huh? But anyway, though, I would say that was probably like one of the biggest things about the game. Like, everybody pretty much wasn't the biggest fan of the handling. To be honest, guys, I can't lie here. I also did play 2015 a good amount. Funny thing is, a lot of players are like, wait, Block, like, why would you be complaining about the game if you're playing it right now? Well, the reason for that is despite the handling being a bit wonky, I still like the game, and I really do enjoy playing old Need for Speed games, and I completely just missed a turn. I was not paying attention. I'm going to have the greatest comeback of all time here, guys. Wait and watch the Patriots come back from the Falcons. This is going to be nuts here. But as I was mentioning, though, I feel like that was, like, the biggest complaint. Like, a lot of players are like, man, like, I can't turn that direction. I do know a lot of people were mentioning the main handling issues in different comments and stuff. Like, I saw that everywhere, and that was my fault because I need to learn to slow down and drift a little bit instead of speeding straight into a wall. The other thing I was seeing a few people talking about was going to be a different thing. I really wasn't seeing that much of, like, at least when playing the game. But then again, after playing the new Need for Speed games, is going to be the customization what do you guys think about the customization in Need for Speed 2015? Like, was it great? Was it going to be incredibly limited compared to something like Unbound or even something like Heat? I would probably say the correct answer to that is most likely going to be yes, because let's be honest, it wasn't going to be perfect in 2015, but I do feel like some of the cars have pretty much nothing on them. Like, yeah, you can have like a mirror, like some... Wow, I missed that turn again. Nice drive in there, buddy, as the NPC flies around it perfectly. Okay, I see how it is. Whoa, dude. That was unfortunate. I might have actually won the race if I didn't get hit like that. No. But, you know, something about that, though, is I was thinking a lot of the cars in the game probably had different licensing things back then. Or, like, maybe you couldn't customize them like you can now in different Need for Speed games. Now, we probably already know for a fact that I did most likely not win that race because I was crashing in basically every single way possible. Because I'm still getting used to the driving in this game after playing something like Heat. But seriously though guys, I did want to get back to that like I do know I was getting a bit off topic there when racing because of the terrible driving I was having. But nonetheless though, one thing I was noticing about the customization in this game is a lot of players probably wanted more out of it. We can all agree right now that he and also Unbound has some pretty dang good customization. Which is probably legit one of my favorite things about Need for Speed like I love it. It really does make the games that much better being able to do that in them. Then again, Need for Speed 2015 was like the first introduction of like these type of games with that kind of customization. We obviously didn't have it in like Rivals or like Most Wanted 2012. So it probably was going to be a new thing to the franchise. So maybe they were experimenting and it was like, you know what, let's test this out, see how players like it. And then the next Need for Speed game will build upon that even more, which I do believe was Need for Speed Payback. Then it was Need for Speed Heat and then obviously Unbound. And then, of course, with each game on that, though, you also had better customization most likely showing up and also more things you could do to the vehicles. Personally, guys, one of the things I would really like in the newer Need for Speed games, most likely notice this in Heat, is the fact that when you were trying to put, like, or, like, lowering your vehicle, the car would also automatically camber. Not really the biggest fan of that. I wish you could actually lower the vehicle or, like, raise it, and then every time you lower it, it's not going to camber automatically like it does. At least I do know if you were to do that in real life, some of the cars probably would start to camber. 
but it would be kind of nice driving like a pickup truck that is lower that if you actually want to raise it a bit or even lower it a little bit more than what it was that it's not going to bend the tires all the way sideways like the Ford Raptor from Heat. I'll show a little clip of that thing right now on the screen, but that thing was honestly kind of hilarious. When I was looking at it, I was like, uh, no. So that was kind of weird. And that is probably something a lot of players looked at in 2015. Like, let's get more customization, build upon this model right here in the next Need for Speed game. And we're on to something here, y'all. Legit on to something. Now, I do know, guys, I did mention it before. Let's be honest, though. The biggest thing about this game I would say everybody complained about, or at least talked about, I even complained about it, guys, when I played the game before. The handling model in Need for Speed 2015 really... Patrick Star, excuse me? Oh, yeah, this game had a lot of weird names on the racers and stuff. But one thing I did notice, guys, is a lot of people were not the biggest fans of the handling model. Don't get me wrong, it obviously needed some work. Not the biggest fan of it myself. Like, when playing the game with my friend a lot back in the day, I was enjoying it. But I was like, man, dude, some of these cars, like, I was noticing a lot with the RSR for some reason, going around certain corners with it. Like, you would drift, the car would actually start to drift, and then for some odd reasons, the car would basically go, like, the other direction. In some weird areas, like, the Huracan will actually slide or, like, float on the ground after certain corners. Now, the funny thing is, I actually wanted to buy the Bet Customs car because I do remember owning this thing a long time ago. So I was like, you know what, let me jump back in and try this thing out in this event. Funny thing is, guys, this is one of my favorite cars back in the day. I also believe there is going to be one of these in Miami, not 100%, but I'm pretty sure there is going to be one in Miami that does have a VTEC motor in it. That's probably crazy looking. It also legit looks just like this thing. I will see if I can find that, but let's see what the car can do. So obviously this thing is going to be insanely quick, but the biggest reason why I did want to drive it is going to be the handling on it. I was actually trying to record some content before with the lovely Hoonicorn. Not gonna lie, guys, I don't like the way that car handles. I know you could probably adjust something on it, but yeah, I, nah, man, like, I really don't like it. This car is really grippy. Dang, see, this thing actually feels really nice, and it's also like a race car, big slicks on it and all that, so it probably makes sense, and you could probably find yourself slowing down a bit more around certain corners would most likely help a bit there. But one of the biggest things I did find about this, though, especially when driving certain cars, like, yeah, the Hoonicorn, probably isn't going to be that great because it's kind of like a drift type of vehicle so it probably okay dude i'm getting stuck on a taxi that's not what i had in mind hey we're both yellow so that's something but one thing i did notice about the hoonicorn though is when driving that thing guys i'm not even going to lie did not like that car at all whatsoever wasn't very fun to drive and plus it was basically sliding everywhere don't get me wrong i do know it's probably a skill issue haven't really driven it that much so it's probably not the car really but my goodness Driving that, then jumping back into, like, the RSR, and then driving the Hoonicorn again, and then also going back into the Huracan, I was like, yeah, some of these cars do feel kind of off. Like, the Bet Customs was actually great. Like, this car is fun. I'm also going to probably jump into another race with it and see if I can actually do that one and most likely actually complete an event because when driving the other vehicles in the game, I was struggling slightly with them because I was having a lot of issues with the handling model here in lovely Need for Speed 2015, but... That was, like I said before, one of the biggest complaints I basically saw everywhere. Like, this game had a lot of positives, guys. I love the atmosphere. It looked incredible. I love the way the map looks. The campaign was actually kind of good, even though it was a bit cringy. Wouldn't say that was a bad thing about it. Like, I do think a lot of people liked it. On top of that, we also had some great positives with the vehicles. I love the fact that the Hoonicorn was in this game. Really hoping the newer Need for Speed games are going to have that car, but I unfortunately don't think that's ever going to happen again. Honestly, a pretty big sad face there, but at least you can jump onto this game and use it. On top of that, you also had the Toyota Supra. I will leave a tag on the screen if you guys want to check that video out. We actually have a Need for Speed game with a Toyota vehicle in. Isn't that insane? I still cannot believe that, to be honest. Let's we'll start a second event here. Now, I would again like to know what you guys think in the comments below. What do you guys actually think about Need for Speed 2015? Like, do you think the game was great? What do you think some of the biggest reasons why the game might have not been the greatest version it ever could have been? I really feel like the number one thing I'm probably going to see in the comments is most likely going to be the handling model. Not even going to lie, guys, that was easily the biggest issue with me. Like, I did play the campaign. I loved it. I don't know if I had, like, 70 or 80 hours or something in this game. Like, I played it a good amount. If you are wondering if I really liked it compared to something like Payback or, like, the other Need for Speed games... I currently am approaching about 70 hours on Heat, and I'm still enjoying it. Most likely going to be doing a lot more videos on that game. Do stay tuned for that, but playing Payback, though, I had almost 250 hours in it, so you can probably see how I did enjoy it. 
I really liked the way that game flowed even though it wasn't perfect. I actually liked the way the handling model in that game was. I felt like it was an improvement over this one. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't perfect. That game also had its issues. I feel like a lot of that was a bit better in Heat, which I am planning to do like a ranking type of video on them to really see which game had like the better handling or like which games kind of struggled. I would almost guarantee the worst handling model is most likely going to be taken by the lovely Need for Speed 2015. That's probably going to come down to the fact that, um, well, it's kind of true, guys. Like, a lot of people didn't like it. Did that say 100 checkpoints, bro? What race am I doing right now, dude? This is a long one, but luckily I am driving the Beck Customs. Like, what's funny about it is I was driving some of the other vehicles before this one, and my goodness, guys, jumping into this car, it legit feels 100 times better. Unless I'm tripping out, it might be my controller. But it is kind of odd, though, because when using the Beck Customs, though, I feel like I'm driving a completely different car in a completely different game, even though it is a different car compared to, like, an RSR. It just feels weird, guys. Like, I feel like I'm playing a different game driving this car. I do understand. Don't get me wrong. Once again, I do know it's probably going to be a slight skill issue. But from what I have seen, though, a lot of people are not a big fan of the way this game handled, or at least most of the cars, for that matter, with the way they handled. I saw a lot of funny posts about, like, people were like, you know what? This game is by far going to be pretty dang good, but that handling model ruined it. And then when driving something like the Bet Customs here, I kind of like, you know what? Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe I'm just tripping out. Maybe it's actually like me or something. But no, some of the cars really are going to be incredibly wonky to use in this game, guys. And I feel like that was the biggest issue with it. And I really do hate to say it, but many games nowadays probably could be great. But a lot of them do seem to have some little flaws or something that basically sets them back. Whether it's like the campaign being too short no references there whether it's something's missing from like the card list or something's missing from the vehicles that you can't add to them and they might have missed that slight mark there of the game being that much better in that aspect so i really do feel like need for speed 2015 had a lot of great positives for one for me i love the map in this game the entire design of it the graphics look amazing my goodness they killed it i actually did like the campaign as i mentioned before it was good i liked the card list even though there wasn't that many cars in the game i don't think there was and on top of that, all the cars were actually a lot cheaper in this game. The most expensive one is going to be the Beck Customs here at $225,000, where something like Need for Speed Unbound and also Heat, you have cars well over $2 million, even though making money in that game was probably a bit easier, which is probably a big reason for that. But I do feel like a lot of players would jump onto here and go, you know, man, 2015's a great game. Like, this game is old. And one thing I really do get a bit concerned about is it is going to be online only, so... The question is, are they going to turn it off? Hopefully not. I really hope they don't turn it off because I'd rather the game stay on and not turn into the crew one. No one was happy about that. And we all do know at this point, though, that easily hurt Ubisoft's reputation. Like, a lot of players are like, you know what? Why would I buy the crew now if you're just going to turn it off? So I'm really hoping that EA and stuff actually makes, like, an offline patch for this game, which I don't think would be that difficult. Like, when playing the game, sure, you're going to be with other players online or, like, the entire game is alive. One of the other ways you could easily do that is for one, turn the leaderboards off similar to something like Drive Club, and then obviously have, dang, I didn't think I was actually going to hit that truck, but I clipped it, but have it so actually you can play like in the game by yourself, all the leaderboards are off and stuff like that, none of that actually matters, and then you can jump on, at least drive around, pick up different vehicles, enjoy the game for what it is. I feel like that's probably going to be a good way to do it also. I think there would probably be a really big issue if they actually turned Need for Speed 2015 off, guys. Like, despite some of the issues we all discuss in this game, I still really enjoy it. I wouldn't say it's going to be the best Need for Speed game out there, but it's also not the worst one. Now, a lot of players can argue once again that, yeah, the handling model might be the worst one, but... And I feel like in a lot of ways, a lot of players are easily going to want to jump onto this game in the future, so hopefully an offline patch happens for it, like... I would be really upset if they actually just turned the game off. They're like, aye, right, peace, bro. I really don't think they're going to pull the move of the crew one. Like, a lot of these developing teams, especially EA, have to be looking at that going, okay, we definitely can't do that, guys. Let's make an offline patch for 2015 or something when the time comes. That way we can actually move, like, the server structure and all that or, you know, those resources over to something else. But at least we can still give the players a chance to play that said game and enjoy it, which is probably going to be the better way to do it. But nonetheless, though, guys, I would like to know your thoughts on this in the comments below. What were some of your favorite things about Need for Speed 2015? And also, what do you think the biggest thing about this game was that was most likely stopping it from being great? Or one of the biggest things about the game that most likely hurt it of not being the best racing game it could have been? I would most likely say everybody's going to have a pretty similar answer. 
But once again, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And even though this game's racing model or like the handling model isn't the best, it's still an insanely fun Need for Speed game.